Katie Ullman reporting for Katie Chats at Hot Docs in downtown Toronto. I'm here with Bill McGilvery. How does it feel to have your film Danny screening at Hot Docs? It is great. Uh, and it's not just my film, it's Justin Sims, co-director, and my film, and Annette Clark is the producer. So it's our film, I think. Um, essentially an NFB production, I suppose, but nonetheless, we directed it, uh, Justin and I. And yeah, great, great. Beautiful building, nice people, you know, what more can you ask for? Big audience, I hope. Yeah. Oh, let me just read something. Okay. This is to stimulate an audience response. This is a review I just read. Now, you know, I'm going to select a few phrases here. Okay. Yes. NFB docs always look terrific. So this one looks terrific, yeah. obviously. <laughs> the story is great. Mm -hmm. That's really good. Okay. Uh, Williams, the subject, is charismatic. Uh, and so is his even more riveting mother. Yes, I would agree with that. <laughs> <laughs> it's really, Danny says, and I think we all agree, it's really the Teresita Williams show. Danny's just a bit player in the story. Absolutely. And uh, how did you meet Danny originally? Tell me a bit about how you guys know each other. I had no idea who Danny was outside of the political arena, you know. Uh, but then when the whole idea of uh, making a film about him started to evolve, then, you know, obviously through research and then meeting pre-meetings before we actually started shooting, etc., got to know him. So really, I had no connection with him personally. Interestingly, I'm a bit older than he is. Uh, in St. John's, where we grew up, the schools were very, very much uh, at odds with, with each other. He went to St. Bond's, Catholic school. I went to Bishop Field College. Oh, an a rival? A rival Anglican school. <laughs> You know, he's the kind of guy who would have thrown stones at me walking down the street had he known me. Fortunately, he didn't know me. Okay, yeah. good. I'm glad to hear yeah. that. No stones. You know, I, I have a hole in my head. Right. And through making this film, was there anything in particular about Danny that you learned that really took you by surprise that you, you know, didn't know? Well, you know, uh, I always saw him from a distance as a politician. And I, I don't live in Newfoundland anymore. Uh, Justin does, but I don't. So the stories about Danny uh, were the ones that I saw on the national stage, you know, his fight with Paul Martin, his fight with Stephen Harper. Um, and then, of course, doing the research, his other fights, of which there have been many. Um, uh, but then when I started to do the research, when we all started to do the research, um, I started to learn more about his uh, works with the Mount Cashel issue, the, the boys who were abused by the priests and his, uh, his legal work in that and also some groundbreaking work he did with women's rights and uh, the woman's right to defend herself, et cetera, et cetera. So like, Danny has done some remarkable things. Plus, he's a pretty good ice skater. Um, but it, what really struck me, and uh, I find it really fascinating, is um, Danny is a, uh, like a real populist politician. You can walk down the street with Danny and not go five steps without somebody saying, hey, Danny, how's it going? You know, this is the premier. Danny, how are you doing? You know, and Danny responding and, you know, shaking hands, etc., etc. I'll tell you a little story. Way back in 1981, I did a film about another Newfoundlander called Harold Horwood, the name of Harold Horwood, who was Joey Smallwood's right-hand person. And Joey Smallwood at the time was about uh, 80, I suppose. This is the kind of town that St. John's is. Um, and I was a young filmmaker, and I went to see Joey Smallwood to see if he would uh, if I could interview him for my film. So I knock on the door. He's the ex-premier. I knock on the door. Mr. Smallwood, yes. I'm wondering if I could interview you. Who, who are you? I said, well, my name is Bill McGilvery. McGilvery? McGilvery. Are you the rich McGilvery's or the poor McGilvery's? I said, well, actually, the poor McGilvery's. He said, I knew your grandfather Thomas really well. Wow. So that's the same kind of thing with Danny. He knows people. People know him. Despite the lofty position, you know, as premier of a province, et cetera, et cetera, he has the common touch. And I think that is, you know, what's missing in this uh, world of spin that we have in our politics now. We have lost, the politicians have lost the common touch. The other thing I learned about Danny, he couldn't have given two hoots if he was re-elected. Mm -hmm. He was a businessman who gave himself to politics for 10 years or seven years, 10 years. And, you know, devil may care if he was re-elected, that's great, but he had a job to do and he did it. So, you know, I, I really admire him. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, in, the, in the film, uh, some subjects are talking about how Danny and 
how passionate he was about uh, Newfoundland and Labrador, uh, how he made them feel prouder to be from Newfoundland and Labrador. And can you speak a little bit to that pride that he helped instill in the people? You know, uh, what a lot of Canadians don't know about Newfoundland is that it was a nation. Prior to joining Canada, it was a nation, and it, it was a dominion, one of the dominions of the Commonwealth. And it was a poor nation, but it was a nation. When I was a kid, uh, it was still a nation. When I was growing up, it was still a nation. So I'm an immigrant, actually. Uh, Welcome to Canada. Thank you. <laughs> You're the first to say that after all these years. I really appreciate you. But, you know, uh, so the thing about that society back then, uh, particularly in the 30s and the 40s, there was a kind of feudal relationship between the very wealthy, who were very few wealthy people, and the many, many, many poor fishermen, fisher workers, and uh, lumbers, and you know, forest workers, and that sort of thing. So there was a real divide, and consequently, there was a lot of malnutrition. There was a lot of uh, uneducated uh, people, uh, and the island was dotted with all these little communities that were not connected by a road. You could only get to them by ocean. So, you know, the, the island was a kind of island of islands in a way. And uh, through the process of confederation, things started to become amalgamated. And in some ways that was good, in some ways it was bad. But the arc of Danny's story, uh, coming from a middle class family and then growing into a, an extremely wealthy man and then becoming an extremely powerful politician, is kind of the arc of Newfoundland becoming a part of the Canadian family. and gaining kind of a middle class status. So you have kids who grew up like me feeling inferior because they grew up in a post-feudal society. And then you have people of the new generation who never knew that existed and who are strong, you know, they have good teeth. Uh, I'm serious. And uh, they have a vision of themselves as productive members of society who can gain wealth and who can do good things. That is a new feeling. And uh, uh, I'll tell you another little secret. There isn't a Newfoundlander who walks this earth who does not shed a tear when Newfoundland comes up. And, you know, it's just the way we are. Yeah. Great. Well, thank you so much. And congratulations on the film. Thanks very much. Thank you. I'm Katie Ullman reporting for Katie Chads at Hot Docs in downtown Toronto.